Let's get dirty, way. Welcome back to Lizard of Doom. I am Max. This is going to be the most comprehensive weathering video I could make on my Chaos Knights using all these different products that I'm going to use for all of them across this Chaos Knight diorama. Thank you if you've been watching along with this Chaos Knight diorama journey that I'm going on. And I really do appreciate you being here. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, give my like button a little tickle. Let's get cracking. This is a low skill, high reward way to weather your minis. Let's get ourselves acquainted with the products I'll be using in this video. You can't do a modern Warhammer weathering video without mentioning AK Interactive Streaking Grime. This will be used all over the model, getting in all of the crevices and dirtying up the overall tone of the model. I've also got a light rust dust to start giving the iron areas their first hints of corrosion. For the places we really want to get the rust building up, we have dirty down rust effect to use in conjunction with the AK light rust on all the iron bits. The second dirty down product we'll be showcasing is the Verdigree. This will be mega useful in corroding all of the brass areas like the trim and all of the internal bodywork on this big brass beast. Back to the AK products now and their muddy ground texture, meant for dioramas and terrain but will be used to give the machine a nice coating of filth all over its legs like it's been splashing around in muck. To complement this I'll be using Vallejo European Earth pigment powder to look like dried areas where the old mud has splashed and is now coating the model. So there you have it, that's the main resources I'll be using to make my scrapper knight look as filthy as a junkyard dog. Now that we have everything in order, let's crack on! I have an interesting way to apply streaking grime for people who don't own an airbrush. You can get these atomizer spray bottles from Amazon for a couple of quid and are meant for perfume. As long as you clean them afterwards using thinner, the nozzle stays working and you'll get nice even coverage all over your miniatures without having to ruin your paintbrushes. Now this doesn't feel right. I have spent hours and hours and days on this night. I'm about to cover it in this brown liquid goo stuff. It smells quite nice, probably shouldn't huff it. A little bit concerned. It's always daunting doing something drastic to a model you've given your love and affection, especially a big and expensive one. Streaking grime, as used by Warhammer hobbyists, is however a reductive technique. You need to fully coat the miniature, then take it away again, in the places you don't want it to be. After that application, I gave it a little blast of heat so it wasn't completely liquid and cracked out the thinner. This product is extremely greasy and it takes spirits to pull it back off. Using cotton buds, I picked out the raised areas I thought would get the most wear and tear and see the most rainfall, and removed the streaking grime to make them appear cleaner. I am so glad I started with such a bright base colour as this gave me a lot of grim dark wiggle room. A lot of grimdark painting just reads as dirty brown, but bringing it down from a high-vis construction paint job means I can push it quite far without losing my model to dirt and grime. I applied the light rust streak and grime more carefully with a paintbrush. I took care to put it on the iron areas that I thought water would run down like from vents or pool around like nuts and bolts. I switched up to a small paintbrush when I needed to get a little more accurate. After this the same thinning was done to create streaks and lift it where I didn't want it. While Pass Max gets into that I'm going to give you your weekly doctored order dose of lizard lore. House Rex's home planet is a crumbled and forgotten relic of the Empire named Discar. Its warm, humid temperatures help the speed at which its hive cities crumbled. Metal turns to rust in no time at all in conditions such as these. The Stolen Knights are a relatively new piece of junkyard equipment on the planet and have not totally been taken by the corrosion yet, but one day they will. House Rex's days are numbered. For now, they are the royals of this world and their main provider of resources for the subjects. They've come a long way from the times of being a small scrapper gang called the Vultures. The Chaos God's gifts now bestowed on them, for the mayhem they cause in their local star system, they plunder neighbouring Imperial planets for metal, not yet touched by the rock of their humid jungle world. The Empire has, however, noticed. They have remembered their long lost foothold on the planet and have started to poke and probe it. Detachments of Astra Militarum scouts have been captured and brought before the noble scrappers, 
the Imperium is looking for something. Would it have been a better idea to stay forgotten and not draw attention to your homeworld? Maybe. But with the confidence of a redneck in the galaxy's most powerful monster truck, they've launched counterattacks back at the Empire, torn down outposts, and hauled the remaining scrap back to their rusted kingdom. The Empire has not retaliated as of yet. Instead, they send more scout parties to their doom. This subtlety is usually unheard of in the Empire of Man, but they're treading carefully. Why are they doing this, the nobles of House Wrecked ask themselves. This is just a pile of untamed wilderness rust and mud. We thought they had the valuable resources to take. What do we have here that they are searching for so sneakily, so carefully, as to not start a planet-wide war? What are they afraid of damaging? After cleaning was complete, I felt it looked a little too perfect, and as a gardener of these models rather than architect, I decided to give some upwards spritzes of some grime to bring back the few random splashes that I had washed off. On the AK Interactive website, it states that it takes 12 hours to dry, so I left this overnight and a whole day while I was at work and then came back later that evening to work on it some more. It wasn't dry. We are four days on in real time now, and it's still not completely dry? Is this something I've done? I don't think it is. Let me know if you've had a similar experience with streaking grime in the past. Odd. I was concerned that it might mess up my next step with the Dirty Down products because they react to water and I wasn't sure how they were going to react to this greasy grime. I had no real choice because time was running out for me to record this week's video and I had to press on. These two products are notoriously bad for settling at the bottom. You'll need something to get in there and gouge out the gunk like this broken brush handle you can see I've used before. They do have a ball bearing in there that you can see is meant to help mix up the goo, but it gets stuck at the bottom and becomes no help to anyone. The goo is thick and viscous and you have to probably smash it about with your mixing stick to get it to loosen up. Verdigris has much the same problem and the ball bearing is always getting stuck at the bottom, so you'll need to repeat the process for this one too. Another tip for this product is that it works better when it's warm, and also when it's applied to a warm surface, so I gave the quick blast of the hairdryer and did the same to the model too. Super easy to apply to areas you want to corrode, and you can even watch the magic happen in front of your own eyes. This stuff is water soluble, so you can remove it afterwards with enough water. This also means that you can shape it afterwards as well, if you don't like how it's gone down. When it reacts with water, it creates these cool looking lighter patches, and they add a lovely natural feel to your corroded section, a bit of texture. I would definitely class Dirty Down products as talent in a bottle. Super, super easy to apply, and some of the best corrosion I've seen. It's a nice idea to break up large metallic areas and denote specific bits as separate, such as the logo on the knight's forehead and the deeper areas of the missile launcher. I loved how the water was making this react, and I thought how could I make this look more natural than like it's happening naturally. Flick water it with a toothbrush? What have I got to lose? The whole model? Maybe. So I began to experiment by risking the whole backside of my model, as it was the most heavily corroded area. And you know what? I bloody love it. By far the best part for this technique is watching the magic happen. It's so satisfying. My 
favorite area on the Mini so far is the gun arm. All of the four effects we've used so far are working in harmony to create the lovely decrepit effect that I've been dreaming of for these big birdie boys. Next up on the agenda is the pigment powder to be applied with a soft makeup brush. I went a bit ham with this stuff to start with, but have no fear, I cleaned it up, got it back in the pot. This stuff needs to be applied in a stippling motion, then gently brush off the excess, leaving it to be caught in all the recessed areas. I like how it looked, so I ended up going a bit further up the leg for the caked on dried mud effect to really show that it's been trawling through mud for a long time, this stuff has splashed up and dried there. To seal this in and make sure it really wasn't going anywhere, a very small amount of hairspray was used. It darkens the colour a bit, but for this project that's not necessarily a bad thing. You can really see the difference this has made when comparing it to the top plate, which obviously has none on it because the knight prefers not to drag his forehead along the ground as he walks. After this, for the wet mud, I'm using AK Muddy Ground Texture, which is just a pot of sloppy diarrhea. The reason I'm using this over a GW texture paint is that it's finer. Due to the scale of the model, I didn't want caked mud to look too chunky and big because I want this boy to look huge and mud wouldn't clump and dry in boulder sized lumps on his ankles. The first technique I used was really wet stippling. Then to create more natural splashing I went back to the flicking technique I'd used earlier with the toothbrush, but this time with poop on a paintbrush. A quick Agrax Earthshade wash to add depth to this mud, not really caring about pooling, as it'll only help the natural look of this wet slop. Followed by a quick Sylvaneth bark dry brush, bringing the edges back to make it look like some of the mud was mid dry and bam! Muddy boy muck skid mark is done! I've got a little deal for you now before we get into the final reveal shots. If you look down there, and my subscribers are less than 1,000, you legally have to subscribe. If by the time you watch this they're above 1,000, then it's up to you. By law you don't have to press the like button, but it is a bit of a legal grey area, so I give it a little tickle just to be safe. And if you've watched this far, you've obviously liked the video, or found it useful, or maybe it's just filled you with so much hate that you couldn't turn it off. In either case, why not subscribe? And then you can continue to catch these videos every Friday when I release the one next week about this diorama continuing onwards for the foreseeable future. Thank you so much for watching. I genuinely really appreciate you being here and coming on this journey with me. And remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun. See you next time.